Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. Now many of you have noticed that at 8.3 guides have been kind of delayed and should have been out already. And the main reason for it is I wasn't entirely sure how to do the best format for the guides this time around with the, well, I would genuinely call it lowered difficulty for the most part, as well as the fact that it's just half the size. So dedicating, you know, a video for a completion guide and an exploration guide doesn't quite make sense. Therefore, what I have decided to do is use this first video to kind of explain the quest for the most part and suggest perhaps the easiest bosses because it really depends on your roster, kind of similar with Karina 747 challenge, which path you will find the easiest. Quite honestly, all of the paths are very doable and easy and do not require items if you do have the correct counters. Especially once you kind of understand how this quest has been structured, uh, that should be quite helpful because there is a set commonality for every single quest, obviously, and a few things to point out. And then in the second part of the video, I will explain which bosses I found the easiest and that will serve as the first video. Then when I will make the exploration guides, I will break down the paths a bit further and I'll combine two quests in a single video. So I'm going to do an exploration guide for 8.31 and 8.32 in one video so and so forth. And then obviously the boss guide. So first things first, um, every single quest in 8.3 has three paths and two of them are striker dependent. So you can see in every quest, there's going to be one weapon disarm striker type of node where effectively you know opponent gains some benefits you activate the striker you switch them off and then here is the key aspect you can use this node well when, when it says unarmed in order to get one benefit or you can capture the opponent's weapon and gain another but then this first one doesn't work so this was the thing that i encountered a lot of confusion about initially because when people see that unarmed node they think while the defender's weapon node is on cooldown they are inflicted with the physical vulnerability passive for instance and then that passive doesn't appear and people are like why it's not working why my relative isn't doing more damage and stuff like that the reason for it is again it goes step by step your opponent has this node at the beginning when the attacker is inflicted with a power burn or drain inflicts a rapture passive blah 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 as soon as you activate the striker, that node is on cooldown and this unarmed node comes into play. So while the weapon's node is on cooldown, they have the physical vulnerability and you're going to be hitting very hard with physical damage and ruptures and stuff like that. Now, when you use capture, while the defender's weapon node is on cooldown, attacker captures the node by knocking the defender down with their special two and then you get the benefits from the weapon node. Then again, the unarmed node gets disabled then. So you kind of need to alternate in all of these. You need to disarm the opponent, use the benefit from the unarmed node, and then before the cooldown's over, capture it and use the second benefit. Additional kind of important point with these weapon nodes is you do not necessarily need to bring in, you know, immunities or champions that counter these abilities because for most part, you can keep this weapon node disabled at all times. So you do not, you know, if there is a weapon node that says you're going to get shocked under some circumstances, you can still use any champions. You just need to be a bit careful. You don't necessarily need shock immune champions for these things. So that is how to explain this. Then there's always a second node, second lane, that's also effectively designed around strikers. Like here, there's going to be some node that gives you special benefits whenever you activate striker and thus make the path a lot easier. So whenever a mutant attacker activates striker, they gain an indefinite prowess, 200%. And we have special connoisseur where you can't do damage unless it's a special attack whilst you have prowess effect active. Obviously, you can ignore this and you can technically do these lanes without strikers as well. But it's much easier with and you get, you know, chunky prowess, so it's worth bringing in champions. But uh, here you can also get by without actually activating a striker. For instance, if you bring in Kitty Pride, you're always going to have Promise active anyways, and your special attacks are still going to do a solid amount of damage. There's Mutant Wrath that increases the Mutant Attack damage, so and so forth. You'll be fine. But it's obviously easier if you use the striker. So that's typically lane two. And lane three, effectively, has nothing to do with strikers. It has some other you know, mechanics and nodes. Like in this example, you just need to bring in 
skill attackers that bleed the opponent and you'll be fine and no strangers are involved and this was like a random i think quest 4 or quest 5 but uh we can see the exactly same breakdown at any other quest so i'm going to jump in the first one here 831 and then we're going to start taking a look at the bosses so at 831 yet again you can see one node right here on the left side throw down can't stop one stock striker vulnerability rubber band you know you just get extra damage whenever you activate the striker and for the most part just bring in science champions and that's it you don't have to have a striker Strikers just do a bit more damage second lane you can see here is assassin striker whenever skilled uh attacker activates striker they gain three crew cruelty buffs increasing critical damage and again you know that's what you kind of want to do otherwise it shouldn't bring in crew champions and then we have this weapon node where we have again a weapon that you disarm by activating a striker and then whilst striker is on cooldown they get energy vulnerability and you can capture opponent's weapon by knocking them down in this case so it's very simple structure really for most part so all of the parts are i i didn't recall one part being you know that much easier than everything else everything seemed to fly pretty by pretty fast relatively easily here if i have to take a boss advice uh if you have gallon at a high rank then gallon is absolutely amazing for this one and if you do not have a gallon then you can bring in uh you can bring in ronan you can completely ronan cheese this gore you will eventually have damaged that region easily Additionally, Wiccan absolutely destroys this gore, and I'm sure there are a handful of other mystics. Just do make sure that you have a way to deal with that regeneration, and that's about it. You know, Ronan will out damage it, Wiccan will neutralize it, and he's gonna have a ton of debuffs and stuff like that. Uh, as a side note, Wiccan is actually kind of like unsurprisingly really, really good for several boss fights. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, so, a good mystic that can deal with this gore's region because the fight is fairly straightforward he just gets his stun immunity after special attacks but again if you stun lock him that's not going to be a problem foresight you get some extra damage if you intercept and you know he can throw a heal block on you sometimes but kind of whatever civil war zone is the point where he's going to be getting armor ups or furies so he's going to be getting getting infinite buffs like gores normally do so any champions that prevail on that so again gallon against the vulture or like ronan cheese or wiccan cheese or if you're fairly confident with tigra obviously ronan can do this fight i believe doom shouldn't have too much problem doing this fight either uh, you know just infinitely nullifying buffs and spamming special threes basically um so yeah there you go uh that is the suggestion for this one so let's go to the next three bosses and take a look at those so here the boss fight <laughs> i already see um one of them was mephisto mephisto was immediately dead with like human torch in absolutely no time and that is probably the easiest boss to take here overall as well we have striker vulnerability and there's not much else happening uh you just basically need to have a striker active and you will be fine obviously void or many of the other science champions that you know typically would deal great with Mephisto will work here as well. There's nothing too special with it. Uh, if you have highly ranked uh, Shuri or Infamous Iron Man, now Shuri it's actually not too easy for this one. Infamous Iron Man was crazy good for this. Uh, just FYI, and then obviously here we can bring in you know Silk or virtually any other science champions. They are all designed to bring destroy that Dormammu, and you can deal with it quite easily. Um, but yeah, my suggestion is definitely take that Mephisto with like Human Torch or Void or some of the other more dominant science champs. So let's go to the next boss fights. Here we have Venom Pool, Anti Venom, and Null. Here again, I would likely suggest Null because uh, it's quite easy to always push him to level 2 with the power efficiency. And here Wiccan was crazy good absorbing man would also absolutely destroy the guy and your typical null counters i do believe that you can also just bring in like archangel even though limber might make it a bit more difficult but we can and 
absorbing man will absolutely destroy this man. Anti Venom is a bit more tricky, and Venom Pool is just effectively a basic fight. There's nothing too crazy about it as well. Um, you can bring in a ton of mystics to deal with that Venom Pool. It's just the Venom Pool boss. But the cheesiest one is definitely Null. And then moving on. I remember that Misty Knight was annoying. Kind of annoying. Moving on to quest number four. Let's find the bosses. And here I would say by far the easiest is Thing. This is showing the level of content. They gave us a Thing boss with no sig ability. No sig ability means no protection. So you can quite literally use like any champion here. The only kind of point of worry is the Calcify node. Whenever they activate a special attack, they will inflict two Petrifies on you and they can start reversing willpower if the fight is aggressive. So, you know, a champion without a willpower, or if you're running, not running willpower, there's nothing to worry about. Champions that are immune to willpower, like, uh, sorry, champions that are immune to messing with region, like, I don't know, uh, I Halt will probably do just fine here. Or you can just use Skill Shrug of Champions, which is probably the thing that's intended. So you can bring in Black Cat. I used Kingpin. It's super easy. It's thing with no sig, and it's shameful that Act 8 eight has dropped to this level um uh, yeah i'm not gonna comment much on it or have annoyed but it's okay and now we're gonna go with havoc uh i mean the boss <laughs> Havoc's actually hard boss on this one i did use cgr and it did succeed just fine but Havoc's quite hard so the easiest boss here is Quicksilver. If you have Kingpin or most of the other skill champions that can shrug off some debuffs and you can just get rid of them by intercepting. But as long as you can deal with the debuffs, it's fine. Uh, if you're relatively confident fighting Quicksilver, super easy here with skill champions because you just want to shrug some stuff off and you want to intercept the opponent and you can be degening and you can do this fight under a minute with you know quite a few skill champions. Another option here for this bishop um, that worked out tremendously well for me was uh, Iron Man Infinity War. It was like two level twos. Bishop never threw a special attack. It was super easy boss fight. If you do not have Iron Man Infinity War ranked, then I'd suggest Quicksilver. And that's it. The final boss, final boss guide is coming out as well. I will be, will be uploading that shortly. But the entire point of this final boss fight is basically just you relatively buff heavy champions and Odin's pre fights, ideally. You know, uh, Hercules, despite what Kavam said, works, Hulkling works, Gamora works, Angela works, Gore works, Venom works, King Groot works, especially with Odin's pre fights, stuff like that. Um, again, it is one of the easier boss fights, and I don't think too much issues should come out of this fight. But I'll still make a guide on it nonetheless for the people who are going to be joining the game later on or are still less experienced. You know, eventually someone might find these useful. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'm going to catch you guys soon. Bye. Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information.